Hey. Hope you're well. This is my house. This is my living room. Hallway. Office. My garden. And this, this used to be our kitchen. Yeah, me and Mrs. Ten Minutes, we've got the builders in. And if you've ever sat with your head in your hands wondering what on earth it is that you've started, well, welcome to the club. Uh, we're going to get out of this building site, back to the workshop, and I'm going to fill you in on what's going to be coming up on this project, where we hope to take it over the next few months and what might appear on the channel. Started out as a <laughs> what started out as a simple kitchen replacement project has grown somewhat, and consequently it kind of affects what's going to be coming up on the channel. Not least of which because me and Mrs. Ten Minutes have had to move out while the building work gets done. Uh, we're doing a, a side return and extension, and in order to explain what that is, I need to share a little bit about the type of house we have. And to understand why we're doing this instead of just moving, I need to explain a little bit about property laws and taxes. I also want to ask you folks what you want to see, if anything, of this project, because this is not a DIY project. I'm going to be completely hands off on this at 63 years old. My house bashing days are well behind me, but from a customer's point of view, if you had a project like this in mind and you weren't keen on doing it yourself, what would you want to see and hear about? on a build like this. Let me know in the comments down below. I have a few thoughts on the topic. We'll get to those later on. But first, let me explain what it is we're actually up to. So we live in a Victorian terraced house, a row of houses that are built along very similar lines with a very similar floor plan that's typically made up of two rooms and a kitchen connected by an entrance hallway. The explosion of this type of house was principally in Victorian times, not just in London, but in all industrialised cities in Britain, and our house dates back to 1891, so quite a late Victorian property. The house is laid out with the kitchen in what's called a back addition, a section of the property that extends into the garden, but doesn't run the full width of the plot, creating a side return that alongside the neighbouring house allows light into the middle room in the layout and provides distance from the neighbours. And this basic layout, this pairing of the properties is repeated all along the terrace. Now one very common way to get additional space is to fill in this side return with an extension extending the kitchen effectively sideways towards the neighbours and whilst chatting with the architects about this they also suggested that as we need to get planning permission here in Britain you can't just build what you like. Uh, as we need to get planning consent we should also apply to extend a further three metres into the garden. So those plans were drawn up, the application made and granted, which is how we find ourselves a few months later moved out and with a building site of a home. Now you might be thinking, hang on a minute, at 63 years old with both your adult children grown and flown and making their own way in the world and with an already extended house that you rattle around in with Mrs. Ten Minutes, what on earth are you doing getting something like this done, spending hard-earned money, making a large house bigger when you should be thinking about downsizing, selling the large family home and moving to something smaller, modern and easy to maintain, a one-floor city apartment with easy walkable access to all the things that people need as they start to get that little bit older and of course trousering the difference in price. And you'd be absolutely right, in fact me and Mrs Ten Minutes looked into doing exactly that a couple of years back and decided that we weren't quite ready for it yet. We're both active, we both have things that we want to do, plus we actually really like where we live, all those things on the tick list, nice neighbourhood with walkable access to shops and easy public transport connections. We have those already, right here. And then there's also the small matter of money. Let me tell you about something called stamp duty. So stamp duty is a tax that comes into play when you buy a residential property and this is levied on a sliding scale. For example, the first £250,000 of the purchase price isn't taxed at all. The next £675,000 is taxed at 5%. And then the next price band is hit for 10% topping out at a maximum of 12%. This bending is applied across the whole of the UK, regardless of the local variations in property prices. Uh, which city do you think has the highest property prices in the UK? Well, that would be right here in London. Uh, we worked out that if we would had moved to that swanky city apartment, by the time you add in stamp duty and the cost of moving, we wouldn't be paying much less 
than having this building work done with absolutely nothing to show for it other than our modern, if small, apartment with a hefty service charge. So we decided to do this instead to knock the house we already own into a modern, low maintenance state. The whole of the ground floor is being remodeled and that impacts on three of the rooms on the first floor as well, which kind of begs the question, how much of this are you folks interested in seeing? As I said earlier, this is not a DIY project. I'll leave all that to Andy Mack, to Charlie DIY, Tim and Joe at Restoration Couple, Vicky Carpenter's daughter, and Stuart, a proper DIY. But I do think that a general video about a common building project of this type, showing the stages of the build and why, for example, are three rooms on the first floor being affected on a ground floor remodel. There'll be a video about what architects do exactly, apart from draw plans and how you go about finding one. A similar video about what to look for in a good builder, for example, and in the interests of balance, what builders and architects also look for in clients as well. Then there's the vexed kitchen question as well. Do you build or do you buy? Uh, and if buying, do you go to a bespoke specialist with no showroom, but a great show reel? Do you go to a generic box kitchen company or somewhere in between? There's other more niche topics too. Solid wood flooring versus engineered versus vinyl planks, for example. If you've got a subject you'd like to see covered or added to that list, then let me know in the comments down below and I'll see what I can do. But that's kind of where we're at at the moment. We're about three weeks into a 16 week build approximately. So there'll probably be a video a month or thereabouts on a related topic for the next five or six months. And of course, if you're interested in the finances of all this, what it's all costing, then I'll be going into those details on the member platform at 10minuteworkshop.plus. More details below at 10minuteworkshop.com as well. Uh, that's it for this one though. Thanks ever so much for taking a look. And I'll see you again very soon. All right, take care. my garden. My garden. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wasn't sure I'd get out of that.